Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Stonemaier Games Treasure Chest, which is a very interesting game accessory you can get from Stonemaier Games. You can order it directly from their website. There's links down in the show notes. And I'm going to be giving you an idea of what it is you get in this chest. So let's go on ahead and open it up. Treasures! Look at this! So, basically, this is arguably one of the ultimate things you can get for pimping out your games. If you want to replace the bog standard brown cubes and red cubes and yellow cubes you've got to represent lumber, clay, gold, ore, stone, and gems in you know whatever your favorite games might be, that's what the treasure chest is all about. And you know, it's actually interesting. There is a very, very nice geek list on Board Game Geek that has a bunch of people suggesting different games you can use all these pieces for, like Francis Drake or Imperial Settlers. Obviously, you know, Agricola and Caverna. Although, actually, probably the one that's really striking, uh, Zulkin, the Mind Calendar. Remember those really awesome blue crystal skulls? Well, just imagine if you were using these kinds of really, really awesome looking pieces. You know, these clay bricks, these, uh, you know, kind of nicely detailed stone lumber. You know, and you can kind of feel, you can feel the lumber grooves in these things when you're holding them in your hand. The, these uh, lovely stone that are uh, resin, but, you know, with like all, you know, very, very nice textured feel. Although even better is the ore. This is actually made out of metal. These things are metal. Each one of them is unique, I believe. And, you know, they have a really nice weight to them, as does or as do the gold bars, which are, let's see if we get in here, you know, again, it was a really great, smooth, silky touch. You know, and when you get a handful of these things in your hand, I mean, you can really feel them. They really weigh you down. And then finally, there's these lovely gems, which you know, are, are, you know, deep and, and faceted. You can see there's lots of, there's lots of fun ways for light to play around in these gems here. So they're actually quite pretty as well. So that's basically what you get. There are 26 of each of these, which gives you pretty much a, you know, enough to use them with most of the games out there that have you building stings, because these are really common building materials in a lot of games. Uh, Keyflower and uh, Oddville, Stone Age, you know, I mean, they can really, have, you know, crank up the table presence of a lot of the games you may or may not own. Now, if I were to complain at all, actually, it's funny. I know a lot of people complain that you know, relative to everything else, the gems don't feel quite as fancy and special because you know they're not that far removed from the kinds of gems you can get in other games. Although I still think they're very pretty. It is kind of a shame that these actually weren't. You know, they're they're cast plastic. Would have been great if they were actual glass. That would be amazing because then they'd have a, you know the same kind of heft that the ore and the gold does. But it's understandable. I mean, that would really have upped the production cost on this significantly to actually do glass. Plus, I don't know, maybe I'm a bit biased because, of course, my wife is a glass artist. So, you know, we're always looking for more glass in our lives. Also, I do think it's kind of a shame that it didn't ship with some kind of very simple little like 5x multiplier chip so that if you do run out of gold, well, hey, you could just take one gold, put it on the multiplier chip, and then one gold could represent five. That was kind of an oversight. It would have been a nice addition, although a lot of games have those. I mean, they come with Agricola as an example. So, you know, that's a minor complaint, but overall, I mean, you cannot fault the quality of these components. They are just wonderful to behold. They really up the table presence, like I said, of whatever game you are going to use them in. Just really, really neat. Actually, I guess maybe these ore are all the same. They just really feel, yeah, they are exactly the same, every single one. But they did, until I've actually looked at them like this, I would have sworn that every single one of them was completely unique because they have such a, a rough, you know, ready texture. And again, you can't tell from the video, but there is weight here. This feels like something substantial in your hands. So anyway, folks, that is Stonemaier Games Treasure Chest, which again, if you're interested, you can order it directly from Stonemaier Games. There's a link for it down in the show notes. But I'm not done yet. There's something else to talk about. The Treasure Chest is getting three sequels. Treasure Chests 2, 3, and 4. And actually, they're on Kickstarter right now. Uh, they, you know, this proved to be so successful. It was a Kickstarter that was run last year in 2014. That now, a year later, 2015, they are upping the ante significantly and creating three new Treasure Chests to add to the base to create a whole bunch more resources. Now, there's a link for it uh, up in the top right corner of the screen 
screen if you want to go to the Kickstarter page and see what all the new stuff looks like. But here's just a, a quick gander at it. So here's the first one. It's the food crate with, and you know, I mean, I've never seen these in person, but I can only imagine, considering how high quality the original treasure chest is, that these are really high quality as well. The, oops, uh, the, the crate and the and the bread and all that stuff. The second one is the resource vault. So any common game resources that weren't in that first one, they're definitely here. Generic barrel, um, you know, steel, cloth. Um, you know, so this really ups the ante, makes this so much more flexible, you know, the, the, this entire system. And then the last one is the energy box, which clearly was kind of perfect for power grid. Obviously, it's kind of got power grid in mind. But, you know, I mean, these things are still usable for a lot of other stuff, too. I mean, fire is a very, very very good general purpose thing. You could use it for Agricola Farmers of the Moor. In fact, actually, there's a really, where is it on, on this page? There's actually a nice little chart here that shows you, based on you know the different crates, what games are completely or partially compatible with them. That's actually a really, really nice feature. So uh, it'd be really awesome to see a similar chart for the original treasure chest. But like I said, there is a there's a really nice geek list on BoardGameGeek that'll give you an idea of how best to make use of all these lovelies. So the links for that, the links for the Kickstarter on the new treasure chest, all that stuff is in the show notes down below if you'd like to learn more. But that's it, folks. That is Stonemeyer Games Treasure Chest. Any questions, comments, concerns, as always, let me know. Otherwise, I think I'm going to end it right there. So uh, have a nice day. Talk to you later. So long. And bye bye